This week, we discussed some of the many things that happened at NFT NYC, as well as EA saying NFTs are the future. Also, we highlight the CloneX avatar project. Stay tuned and welcome to NFTs with Keys. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for all that NFT news you need. Uh, also comment below, it helps a ton with the algorithm. I know I say this every time, but seriously, it helps us a ton. Yeah. And also repost this, send it out to all your friends, family, you know. Actually watch the whole video, that'd be nice too. Yeah, yeah seriously, you know, what's up? <laughs> Um, so the first thing I want to jump into is uh, NFT NYC happened. It just wrapped up this past week, you know. Woo. Yeah, only heard uh, good things. Seems uh, like a lot of fun. Wish I could have gone. Yeah, you know, uh, I did have an opportunity to go, but uh, just life. I have to work a normal job, unfortunately. I didn't get into board Ape early and sell one or two and become a millionaire. Wow. But, you know, hey, things happen. Life happens. Um, <laughs> so, so there was a ton of talks and uh, parties that happened uh, throughout the last... Uh, pretty much all of last week. Um, basically, NYC was invaded by 5,000 NFT artists yeah. and collectors. There was over 5,000 people that came to New York, to the Big Apple, just to rejoice in the glory that is NFTs. That is insane to me. Yeah. Uh, some of the talks that they had, uh, you know, uh, the talks by like Gary V, Jody Rich, Miguel Romero, mm -hmm. David All, Dave, uh, Noah Davis, and so many more. There was a ton of stuff. Even an astronaut was uh, a speaker because they were talking about NFTs in I space. Mean, to the moon, baby. To the moon. <laughs> um, so, yes. Some of the topics uh, range from, like, the change and impact uh, and NFTs to the space. Uh, another one that I thought was interesting was, uh, is, is our NFTs in a bubble? Or NFT bubble is there, you know? Um, there was also uh, a, a talk about comedy NFTs, oh. which I haven't seen any of those. And I, I'm kind of interested. To, I'm, I missed out on that talk. Uh, uh, I didn't get to, because they were live streaming some of the stuff through, you know, right. people who couldn't make it. Right. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting when I saw that. Um, another one, too, uh, they had Christie's uh, talking about NFTs in, uh, in auctions. So that's kind of cool too. So kind of like how um, the NFT world is going into the auction house world, which if you know anything about auction houses, it's not the way like open seas works. It's, it's off the books, it's off chain kind of sales. So it was kind of interesting. Um, uh, touching down on each of these topics though would probably i would have to do like seven or eight shows so we're oh, just gonna, yeah we're just gonna touch down on some of the kind of top ones that i saw that i kind of thought were interesting uh the first one uh was gary v pretty much told people in the, in this space to do their homework uh when it comes to nfts which i mean as someone who's been in nfts for over a year now uh yeah that's what you have to do you have to do your homework um he was speaking at an event called one, two, three blast off to NFT land. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the name guys. I love that game. Um, so, um, he stated that he wasn't really into, um, altcoins or anything like that. Um, mostly because he, yeah, because he couldn't really understand it. The whole, like, um, the way it works. I mean, he obviously is a very successful, um, venture capitalist right. and, and, you know, uh, entrepreneur. So like the fact that he really couldn't wrap his head around it is kind of a telling thing about some of these altcoins, especially with all the rug pulls that happen with them. Um, but he did love the, the, the strong storytelling and the, the mm -hmm. narratives mm -hmm. that NFTs bring. It's so it's bigger than just a pump and dump. Yeah, exactly. So that's why he, he, he was all for it and he really has gone like, he's one of the biggest names in NFTs as like someone who supports people and, you know, buys a ton of nfts i mean he's buying them every day right um he also predicts that there people are gonna lose a lot in nfts um which i've been saying for since pretty much day one since i got into nfts like 95 percent of all these things are going to be worthless so that's why i say buy what you love or you like because it's going to be subjective for you the old beanie baby bubble <laughs> I had some beanie babies too yeah. i'm not gonna lie um but yeah so he said uh he said i quote or quote uh, I believe there is a 100% chance of a massive dip um, because he's watching uh, people ape in, uh, trying to flip tokens and jumping from project to project, only chasing gains. Yep. Pretty much what I've been saying forever. Don't buy things because you're just trying to get gains. You, you know, it's like, look at the Mechaverse stuff. A bunch of people went into that. We're buying, you know, for three, four ETH and now the floor is one. It's a shame, too, because I really like the Mechaverse project. Yeah, I was hoping it'd go lower so I could buy one. Um, 
He also said, I don't know uh, what's going to happen, uh, but he does know why it's going to happen. Money mm -hmm. blinds people like a mother effer. I <laughs> guess we'll, we'll try to keep it kid friendly here. Um, so that is kind of a, a fair point. Uh, money does blind people. Yeah. I mean, again, again, to bring up the Mechaverse, that's a good example of um, money blinding people because people were like, oh, we're, this is going to be the next board ape. I'm at fault for that, too. And it kind of, you know, overhyped. And so, yeah, so it blinds people and people are probably hurting from that drop. Um, he also advises everyone to get into um, uh Get it that is in the NFT space or is already in there or trying to get into it to spend about 40 to 50 hours studying projects and the different categories that before jumping in again, doing your own homework. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do that, um, I mean, obviously we're not saying like spend 10,000 hours to become a master at NFTs, unless that is your goal, then by all means do that. But if you spend at least, you know, two to three hours a day looking into mm -hmm. these projects or joining these communities, you'll, you'll know if it's worth it or if it's something you want to do. Well, like that's exactly it. when you say spend 10,000 hours, what exactly is it that these people should be researching about the NFT to know like the project's going to be legit? Well, I mean, well, when it comes to that whole 10,000 10, hours, that's just kind of a saying that people say like oh, in order right, to become right. a master and just like, spend 10,000 hours doing that craft. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to necessarily be like if you were trying to become a master NFT, I guess, guru or aficionado or something, then yeah, you might want to spend that much time. But you're also if you're trying to get to be a master of that status, like, yeah, you're not sense. just looking at projects, you're looking at the utility, the interoperability stuff, the web three stuff that's coming the metaverse stuff. Okay, like you'd have to look into all that. I think what he's more saying is, spend some time actually looking into the creators go follow them on twitter like ask questions in their amas and be active in the community see what the uh, the passive rewards are you know he's okay. really i think he i think he, it came off to some people who might just read a headline like he's telling people to do their homework but really he's saying it from a place of love like mm -hmm. don't he doesn't want people to lose money he wants people to get money but he also wants people to realize that nfts aren't always going to make you money and you, you got to buy what you like. Or if you are trying to go after the, the next big project, do your research, do, you know, do your homework. Mm -hmm. Um, he also stated that although he believes NF NFTs will be everywhere in the economy soon and that many of these established uh, projects will lose their value. Um, which is true, yeah. uh, but there will also be giant successes to come uh, that will, you know, define the future. That's and, true. Uh, I think that's honestly, I mean, he, He's really smart. He knows what he's talking about. And although he's sort of new to the NFT space, uh, he seems to know what he's talking about. Clearly, he's done his homework. So, you know, I, I think everyone out there, do your homework. Uh, it's good stuff. Um, another thing that I thought was really cool, that uh, cool news that came out of NFT NYC was uh, Quentin Tarantino announced that he's going to be minting Pulp Fiction NFTs. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so the famous director announced that he'll be releasing seven NFTs of the cult classic Pulp Fiction, uh, and also these NFTs are extremely rare in the sense that these are never before seen scenes or you know text from movies. So these were cut. Interesting. So okay. So, so no one's from the directing room floor. Yes. No one's ever seen these. These are super like I guess you could say rare in that sense. So I thought that was really cool. Um, each of the NFTs will feature digitalized uh, excerpts from the original handwritten script for the film, as well as snippets of audio and audio commentary from Tarantino himself. Okay. So no one's ever heard some of this audio because it's from him and it's talking about these scenes and these scenes are, from my understanding, were cut. No one's ever seen them. They didn't make the the movie, so that's pretty cool. Right. I, I I do have to say that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, wow. there is a Ooh, secret. No there there is a secret to the NFTs, and the secrets are uh, about the film and the creator. So there's even more stuff like about the um his world that he created. You know, like he and when you think about it, he created a metaverse. Oh, the, the Pul Tarantino verse. Yeah, he, he, and everything's in it. It's more. It's bigger than just Pulp Fiction. They're all oh no. in the Tarantino yeah, verse. Yeah, yeah. Glorious Bastards has Kill like yeah, yeah. What happened in Glorious Bastards is the reason why the United States is so violent in Pulp Fiction. That's like all about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tarantino verse. Yeah. So, um, the first NFT is yet to be a. Uh, uh, announced for a mint date, but Tarantino did say that uh, one will be sold later, uh, about in a month. So probably December, probably my guess would probably be around uh, the holiday seasons. That's cool. Um, 
Tarantino did say that there is no amount of money in the world that would uh, that would make him give up the <laughs> or no, let me rephrase this. Quote, there is no amount of money in the world that would make me give up my original script. It's not worth it to, uh, for me to sell it. And it's not worth it to it's not worth it to me to put in a museum and have sit in a glass case. But doing it this way, I think it's an exciting thing. You know, I've never really thought about it like that. I guess there are scripts from from cult classics that have have full storylines and everything that some people just didn't even know existed out good. And I hate to use this as a comparison to Quentin Tarantino, but uh, uh, what was it? Batman, the Justice League movie. You know, like when we got Snyder's cut, the four hours, it was a completely different movie. We had Dark Side. We had a plot. It was great. Sorry. So I don't mean to. I'm sorry, Tarantino. Your movies are they're masterpieces. It's Justice League. I get it. The get Snyder's it. cut sucked. It this was is blasphemy. I'm sorry. It, I'm so, you it know was what? better. We, it, it's a mixture of opinions here. We're going to agree to disagree on this one. How dare you? I'm going to credit. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, yeah. So, she swore recently. A producer told me that. Yeah. The- yeah. No, she totally did. Anyways. Uh, so Tarantino <laughs> isn't the first filmmaker to get into NFTs. In fact, uh, Eli Roth actually put him on NFTs about a year and a half ago. Uh, he just couldn't wrap his head around NFTs, which is like 100% of everyone who enters NFTs. They're like, I don't get it. But they're worth so much. They don't get why. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> so another thing that happened during uh, NFT NYC that I thought was pretty interesting and kind of cool. I, I, I'm really curious to see where this goes and see if there's more of these things. But it was called the Dreamverse NFT Festival. It's more of a concert, okay. more so. Not, with- but I, I, it wasn't a big festival like you and you think of festival like EDC or Glastonbury or something like that. You right. Know? Or the, massive. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. I don't know these things. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a proper, proper kid. Sure. Sure you are. Rick. Rick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So what was really cool about this, and I thought it was a little crazy, you're going to trip out on this. Right. DJ Alesso announced uh, <laughs> at the NFT themed party that he will be taking two collectors of his first NFT collection called Cosmic Genesis mm-hmm. to space. Boom. Straight to the moon. Well, I mean, five minutes in space. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that was kind of cool. The- do you know, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. It's not cheap. So the fact he's doing that is really cool. I wish I would have owned one of those or do own one of those because that'd be pretty cool. Like I, I would love to go to space, even though I don't know if I would really be able to handle it. I don't know if my stomach can handle this. Jeez. The, yeah, I, I'll try it. I'm, I'm with it. Um, so yeah, what was really cool too about the party itself is they utilize augmented reality and virtual reality cool. to showcase uh, digital art from uh, about 150 different artists. Okay. Um, one of the biggest stars, well, the biggest star. Uh, of the night was Beeple was in attendance and oh, wow. uh, and his record breaking sixty nine million dollar NFT was on display uh, at the event and what was really cool about that is the guys who threw this uh, Dreamland verse um, or whatever it's called I already forgot Dreamverse yeah there you go sorry uh, the Dreamverse uh, the people who threw it which is Meta Logan uh, I think it was Meta Logan or something like that and then uh, Tubador uh, they're the ones who actually bought. The, the NFT. So that's why they were able to display it because it was theirs. That's cool. um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, imagine being able to see it in person being projected. My guess would be on a whole wall so you can. Well, you said augmented reality too. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I don't know how. The, I, don't, I don't know how they would have uh, adjusted that, you know, like to make it augmented reality or if it was just on display on a giant wall because you're talking about. It's huge. I've seen it. Yeah, it's it, it's epically Ep- huge. And every it's really, every piece of art that was done in, in progression. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, something cool, too, that happened, uh, Tubador said uh, <laughs> about NFTs is when the native Spanish-speaking person in the hinterlands of Latin America creates a work of art, he doesn't have to translate it. He doesn't have to do anything else. And it is still valid. Ooh. It is still relevant to the rest of the world. And that's Ooh. the model of the NFT space, which I got chills just saying Ooh, that. that you know? Yeah, that's... that's- yeah. You know, because it it, it it hits the it hits the nail on the head. It really does about uh-huh. what NFTs are. Is it, it breaks boundaries. It it doesn't limit to oh English speakers or German speakers or Japanese speakers or whatever. It, it's it's everybody. Everybody can see it. You can buy it. it. Whatever everybody's currency is the same on a certain blockchain. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like you're using US to yen or something like that. You know, or pesos or you know. So it's like. 
Yeah, it's kind of cool. I thought that was a really cool hmm. statement. He said, um, it also seems the success of the Dreamverse event may lead to more uh, events like this. And I've also heard a rumor. Uh, it's a rumor, so we don't know if it's true. But um, I heard they're going to try to do um, some of these events in the future that incorporate the metaverse. Okay. So my guess is maybe you might pay a lesser amount or it'd be free. Uh, my guess would pay a lesser amount to enter in a metaverse version of these events with, you know, maybe a live stream of the DJ or the DJ is in the metaverse and his thing while he's performing live. And, you know, right. Right. So like, I thought that was kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see if that does happen again. It's a rumor. Uh, you know, I would hope that they do something mm. like that. Cause I would, I would tune in for that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if blizzard jumps on board and gets in the, uh, <clears throat> gets in that metaverse game, if only to be the ones providing the servers and the sharding to make it happen. Uh, well, let's be honest. Any of you that played WoW know their sharding is horrible. Never uh, mind. I take that back. Yeah, I mean, speaking of uh, not Blizzard per se, but video games, EA, uh, EA Games said that NFTs are the future. Yep. Uh, the CEO, Andrew Wilson, uh, called NFTs and play to earn <laughs> games uh, that they're the future of the video game industry, which it's kind of it's kind of a no brainer when you figure it, when you really sit down and think about it, mm -hmm. but it's also not clear, uh, how, but anyone, uh, but how it's going to happen, you know? So we don't know who's going to really like pave that way. Um, it seems like they're, you know, if EA is jumping in it, it EA makes me un uncomfortable a bit because they've ruined a lot of big games like FIFA and, you know, with their loot box stuff. Uh, and like, I was going to say, and, and yeah, gambling, yeah, gambling. yeah. And that stuff's banned in certain countries. So it'll be interesting to see because, it wouldn't play to earn be essentially gambling. You know, I've thought about that too, but when you really think about play to earn, the only real model that I can come up with in my head is kind of what Axies did. And in, in order to even start getting into the game, you have to, you, you have to pay money. You have to have a team of Axies to play. Right. Uh, and, and I would imagine it would be something very similar in any kind of play to earn game that someone like EA would do. But in order to make it feasible, I would imagine that they would give you that, that NFT when you purchase the game. So like, uh, let's say a, a game similar to Axie Infinity brought to you by EA, need a team of three. Well, you're going to get that team of three when you buy the game. Yeah, I just I, like. I just think there's a kind of a legal gray area that's going to be someone's getting sued big in it because you got to think their loot boxes are illegal in certain uh, countries well, because it's considered gambling. True. So true. if even if you buy the game, you're still buying the video but, game to buy loot boxes. So there, there is, that's why I say it's a gray area. I don't think it's gambling at this point, but I can see a country that's like anti-gambling laws. Yeah, United States. Or, well, not even just us. We allow, you know, loot boxes in America. There's other countries that have straight straight up banned and like FIFA had to change its whole model just for that country. Well, yeah, like when we talk about NFTs too, like look at South Korea. South Korea just made made it their their stance on what NFTs are that they are that they will not be considering NFTs an asset. Period. Not that they're not a digital asset. So like if, if yeah, gaming yeah. companies use NFTs like this, then I guess there is no like. Yeah, yeah. no, that's why I said it's a weird gray area. Yeah. I have a feeling some country is going to get really mad because I they're agree. not getting broken off. So that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. Yeah. EA's in this. Yeah, so EA is in this. Uh, Wilson also stated, uh, and I quote, I think that in the context of the games we create and the live services that we offer, collectible digital content is going to play a, a meaningful part in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, I mean, obviously, as we were just just discussing how it'll play a meaningful part. Um, although EA has not stepped up into the space uh, to release any kind of NFTs, uh, the fact that they're interested in doing this, I think EA is going down the path more so to the play to earn stuff, more of on the crypto side, not necessarily NFT based. Yeah, I believe that. But I also find it really hard to believe that they wouldn't try to enter the NFT space. There's just a big hiccup there, what, I, what I'm seeing, foreseeing at least. Um, mm -hmm. One of the hurdles I'm seeing is the licensing rights. Because you got to think, EA Games, EA Sports, FIFA, well, these football clubs have exclusive contracts for right, NFTs right. with other companies. Uh, think about, I, I think uh, EA does the NFL Madden games, right? Yeah, so the NFL just announced a partnership with Dapper Labs. Right. So no players, no team logos. They can't, they can't sell an NFT off of that. Huh. So, so these Good are, point. so these are hurdles unless, unless, you know, um, there's some sort of licensing agreement where, you know, um, EA would be able to pay Dapper Labs an exorbitant amount of money to use that and then pay mm. the NFL a bunch. And then it's like Dapper Labs plus EA for video game, you know, which 
would be a genius for Dapper Labs to get them out there in every country and everyone would be even want, wanting to buy more of their, you know, You might NBA even just be shirt. predicting the future right now. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Yeah, hey. <laughs> you know? You heard it here first. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the easiest things I think that it would be for them to do uh, would be NFT uh, version or play to uh, earn type of game for Apex. Yeah, everyone's all about that Apex life. I mean, some people are. I've heard people call it gay Apex so, <clears throat> because they don't like it. But I don't understand why people would make fun of a game. I've never actually played Apex, I'll be completely honest. So, But like that would be an easier license for them to do because they own that. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, So that's something that they created. It's not licensing based off of a sports team. So I feel like the EA Sports stuff is going to struggle when it comes to doing that. But I also do think the whole reason EA announced this at during their uh earning calls uh, a few days ago or by the time anyone watches this probably about a week um it's because ubisoft announced that they're gonna enter uh block developing blockchain games could you imagine a splinter cell game that you earn crypto do it ubisoft uh, you know do it please <laughs> Ian, that's could cool. you just bring that back that game Damn. Splinter Cell was really good. It was one of the best games ever. Same like, with Siphon Filter. Yeah, 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 exactly. Those, the, the, <clears throat> those stealth games, like, those, yeah, those uh, are shit. Every man. time I hear Play to Earn, I, I just see in my head this, like, one really happy third world person who's making, like, an exuberant amount of money playing this game versus, like, the taxiing you had to do. And we're not talking, like, driving a car taxi. We're talking the holding sticks, someone behind you running around in your own two feet taxi. But then I also can think of, like, well, might as well get the old, uh, the old paid earn sweatshop going. Oh Let's my do god! It. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I take that back. No, no. I see where you're going, and that is a concern, though, when it comes to like the play to earn stuff. You know, because who are you really helping yourself or the company that put it out? You know. Mm -hmm. So I totally, I totally understand that. You're, you know, you could speak. Student athlete. Ah, yes. Yeah, well, no. Athlete. See, see, because of that, though, that's the student athletes aren't student athletes anymore. They can make money off their likeness now. Sure, but this is like the sweatshop. Yeah, the no, 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 you're right. Yeah, that, and NCAA did kind of, you know, uh, yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. 100%. Yeah. You're not wrong. Um, so, yeah, now we're going to move on to the highlighting an NFT project. Uh, this one's really exciting. It's one that I probably will never be able to afford, but I love what they're doing and yeah. I love the way they look. Yeah. Um, this is the Clone X Avatar project by RTFKT. I don't know how you would say that normally, so I'm just going to spell it out for you um this is it looks like similar like to a pfp project but it seems like they're making these avatars for the metaverse i will get to that at some point after doing research i learned that is exactly what they're doing um so again it's not just a profile picture mm -hmm. obviously you can use it as a profile picture but uh as i'll talk to uh, talk about more in a minute uh yeah it it's it's deeper than just a pfp project um, so I think this project looks amazing. I was showing you about it. Um, it's basically 3D anime it's awesome. characters. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really hyped on it. Uh, if Clone X would like to send me one, I would love it, but I doubt it. Love and to like actually talk to you guys directly. Yeah, this, no, that'd this be project cool. looks really, really good. And, and I, I'm super curious to pick your brains. Yeah, no, I would love, I, yeah. Hit us up. Or I guess we could DM them, but we'll figure it out. Um, so the amount of avatars that will be um, uh, put out, uh, there's 2,000 total, uh, 10,000 for pre-sale, 10,000 for public sale. 20,000 total. Did I say, what did I say, 2,000? 2,000. 20,000. Yeah, I can't, I can't talk. Sorry. So yeah, 20,000 will be minted, 10,000 for pre-sales, and 10,000 for public sale. Uh, the pre-sales uh, will be able to mint for 0 0.05 Ethereum. Which it sounds cheap after I just said I would never be able to afford this. And I will get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, the pre-sale will, uh, op will open up for about 48 hours uh, at the set date. So when it does go live, there'll be about 48 hours for people to mint for the pre-sale. Um, the set date uh, is not announced yet. But I think they were going to say something around later this month in November. Um, so in order to get into the pre-sale group, mm -hmm. uh, you have to... Uh, you have to own one of the qualified RTFKT NFTs, and Ooh. that will give you the ability to mint up to three avatars unless you get one of their meta keys, and then it would only let you mint one avatar. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and then the public sale price, the public sale will be pricey at either one to three Ethereum. 10,000 of them, though. Yeah. 
10,000. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you, the public sale is kind of expensive. If you can afford one of the, uh, the, their certified NFTs, then cool. But I, I did a price check this morning. Uh, everything's over 10 Ethereum. To, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, the only one that I did see that was available still right now mm -hmm. is a meta key. It's the only one available and it's 0.22 Ethereum. And that will probably be gone by the time you watch this video, everyone Man, out there. The news just works so quick in the NFT world. Um, so again, each person in the public uh, drop will be able to mint three, uh, just like in the private in the, the private drop. Mm -hmm. um, they have they, they have yet to set a, a or announce a, a set date or a, a drop date. Essentially, is what they're they're calling set dates for the public drops. Okay. But again, it does look like mid November. The same with the private drop. Uh, they haven't announced how they're going to do the drop, but they or they did announce how they want are going to do the drop. But they want to try to figure out a way to stop the gas wars. Um, because you could you imagine Good spending luck. three Ethereum plus another probably two Ethereum what, for gas. Wait, 1.2, 1. <laughs> 1. 1.3 Ethereum for gas. <sighs> I yeah. feel so bad for you guys. But what's interesting, which this is why I think I might be able to get in here as long as this, this project doesn't sell out within like a couple hours, which I think it will. Um, they're doing a Dutch auction. I don't know if you know what a Dutch auction is. Nope. Um, I'll explain it then. Uh, <laughs> a Dutch auction auction will start at the start price. So let's say it okay. starts at one or three Ethereum. Okay. Um, as time goes on, it gets cheaper. Oh, that's cool. Until they're all sold out. So after a certain amount of time, it'll incrementally go down. So let's say every 10 minutes, it'll drop 0.1 Ethereum. Yeah, so 10 so, minutes sounds about right. This thing will sell out in hours. That's it, funny. You know what I mean? So it's like once it hits a certain price point. So that's why I'm curious. I think they'll start at three, hoping that they sell out. But if they're smart, I think they'll do one and a half. And then they're hoping to probably be sold out by the time it drops to like 0.8. Once I see the Forbes article about this, then, uh, uh, then it'll be sold out in about yep. two minutes. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, like, it won't matter what kind of like how they've designed the algorithm. It's Oh, yeah, it's a Dutch auction. Every floor starting price, three ETH. Let's start the auction and they're sold out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one will ever know what the floor really could have been. Yes, exactly. So um, some of the utility that you get with this is they'll they'll be having airdrops for, you know, That's cool. just free stuff that, you know, the developers and creators will give away. Um, the owners will get lifetime RTFKT benefits, Okay. Um, which I'm not sure 100% what that is, but I like the way that that sounds. You know, <laughs> lifetime benefits is always of course. good. Of course. Um, the owner will, uh, will get a 3D model. Uh, I'm assuming of the the clone X that you mint. Um, this is the first ever 3D anime avatar project. It's also metaverse ready, and this is where I yeah. kind of talked about it in the beginning. Um, there'll be updates as it goes along, but what they're basically doing is they're going to be uh, giving you uh, 3D uh, files so that when you go over to another chain or another place where you want to use that you can use your avatar you can upload your actual clone x avatar and so you can use it between different chains so that's yeah. going to be really cool to be able to you know especially if you spent three ETH on this I'd, I'd want to walk around the metaverse as my my like was that's what eight thousand uh, ten thousand twelve thousand dollar investment right there i'm super excited about the back end of all of that and the development that needs to get done to make that a reality and to see 3d models like this moving between different game studios and stuff like that that's going to be so cool I, mm, all this advancement yeah so and then it's kind of interesting too like all these uh, avatars have different they call them dnas and so there's different um I think the DNAs is for the different clones. Mm -hmm. So then you, how many you can have, uh, there's a bunch of different rarities of them. There's like seven to eight different DNA types. So that means there's going to be a lot of different variations of these. Um, you can also, they, they call these things like forging, but forging just makes means making physical items. So like okay. some of these that you'll be, you'll be able to, that you hold, you'll be able to actually like make or buy like the physical item, like the shoes that they're wearing or the jacket that they're wearing, oh. kind of stuff like that. Um, there's gonna, there's over 400 uh, 3D traits for this. So this is gonna be pretty big. So uh, I don't know if that means everyone's gonna have at least one rare trait and then maybe a bunch of like common traits, but it does, if with over 400 across 2000, there's obviously gonna be some overlap, but mm -hmm. each one's gonna have, my guess would probably have a, 
at least one rare trait or, or a trait that's only, you know, 5% of everything or 2% of everything. So that'll be kind of interesting too. So I think that's uh, pretty cool. And also too, like I was saying with the forge thing, you know, being able to get um, IRL uh, merchandise, essentially yeah. some of these uh, trades you can actually forge into, you know, a physical item. So like a jacket, like I was saying, Yeah, like, or, I think that's really cool. And that's, that's really thinking outside the box. You know, yeah. hey, look, at my, look at the kicks my NFT has. Well, I can buy those. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can make them now because you have the rights to those making those shoes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so like that, that'll be, I don't know how exactly they're going to lay that out. I'm sure that there'll be more information as that goes down the right. line. Um, they also have a ton of giveaways. Well, I don't want to say necessarily a ton cause I only saw the three, but if they're doing giveaways now, they're probably going to continue them, especially when the drop happens, especially for holders. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say keep out on their social medias and join their discords. I'll have all the links in the description if anyone wants to look at that, including all the, the pre-sale stuff you want to buy if you can afford it. Um, moving on to the roadmap, the roadmap is pretty straightforward. Um, the first thing is they want to get metaverse ready. So I, right. it sounds like, cause this company, this isn't the first NFT that they've done. Clonex is just their avatar project. They've mm -hmm. been, like I said, because obviously to get into their pre-sales, you have to own their other NFTs. Right. So I think they've been developing metaverse stuff because they've been making like clothing for metaverse stuff, like shoes and jackets and other stuff like that for that are wearables in the metaverse. So I think they're they're pretty ready for the metaverse for this avatar project. So I don't think there's much development that they have to do. Okay. So like, I I'm excited to see this drop and see how it gets adopted in other places. Cause you know, people are going to look at this and go, I need to steal that or maybe not steal it, but copy it. I mean, Throw it's name, homo name game homage the or race. something. I don't know, man. But yeah, so each clone X avatar uh, for the metaverse ready part, it's each clone X avatar owner will be given 3D files to use as cross platform, which I said already. Uh, there's forging events. So it sounds like uh, physical collectibles for holders. So mm -hmm. it sounds like some, maybe you get a 3D print of your actual, you know, 3D anime character. That'd be kind of cool. Um, there's also clone X wearables. So it'd be wearables for your clone. So again, like a jacket or shoes or a watch or okay. a hat or a gas mask or something like that, whatever they have. Um, there's also going to be special access to the RTFKT ecosystem and CloneX only experiences. So it sounds like they'll have events for the holders and other stuff like that. Uh, they also have a dream collaboration mm -hmm. um, with... Uh, which is a huge collab for them, uh, especially since they're doing anime style. Is Murakami, uh, I think, has already done one of the, the avatars. So that would be kind of cool. I would love to own that one because yeah. I've, I've seen it. Although I don't like what they did with the teeth because it looks super uh, Takashi 6 9 with the rainbow teeth. But Okay. But, but like... I, I like the rest of, uh, okay, I still like it, but like still, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't like the inspiration that it was drawn from, but I, li I like what they were doing there. Um, so yeah, the, the community does seem pretty close knit too. So I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, so again, I think anybody who's joining this, feel free to speak up in those discords. Cause when I jumped in, I just said a few things and people were like, Oh, Hey man. Oh, and they were super happy. That's good. There's, there's been other discords I jumped in and they're just, they ignore you or like, they're kind of pompous or whatever so it's like seeing a community that actually like welcomes new people into it you know it's kind of nice you know yeah. be nice to people out there people um so yeah uh this project uh, it seems like a good project to me and if you can afford it um yeah get into it and, oh, and also n this project will never dm you you'd have to dm them first on, on discord uh I just kind of have to say it because I've seen more scams recently. And yeah, it's a real shame. And no good project's ever going to DM you first. My producer's shaking his head because and he got scammed. We, we've all, I think we all know a person who's gotten scammed in the NFT space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But again, I'll put all the links in the descriptions, uh, you know, to their website, to all the open seas pages to buy one of the presale um, item or one of the items that will get you into the presale. So yeah, and, there, and I'll add their discord and their twitter account too so go give them them a follow um so yeah uh yeah just go check out the project uh drop a comment go let me know what you want to see next time when i do a highlighting a project um thank you rick for being here of course. don't forget to like subscribe ring the bell comment share the video with everyone go follow me on twitter yeah, you saw, go follow me on Twitter at NFTs with keys and also my friends at Our Heroes Crypto. And that's all.
Deuces. Here I come from the west side.